name's Kwame. I am a master's student at the London School of Economics studying human rights. I've recently founded an organisation called Project Five Fifths and we use media and events to help people to engage with different communities. Poverty can be looked at from two different perspectives. Um, the perspective that I like to focus on is the relational poverty that we see in society where people don't see each other as equals and that has a direct impact on economic poverty which is a poverty that's spoken about more the, the more in your face type of inequalities where people aren't afforded the same access into jobs people aren't afforded the same access into housing these surface forms of poverty are in, in my opinion the fruits of a, a deeper relational inequality which Project Five, Fifth, Five Fifths seeks to address. Creativity is more powerful than academia. Academia is brilliant, it gives us a rich depth, un, a rich and deep understanding of issues that need to be addressed, but creativity has a way of engaging people across a broad, broader spectrum than academia. It's more accessible, it's more um, it's more tangible for people because you're actually able to see, you're actually able to feel and you're able to empathise more closely with people who are going through situations. So again, creativity, whether that's through podcasts, whether it's through films or music, is a powerful tool, in my opinion, the most powerful tool for being able to create empathy and to close distance. The importance of empathy can be brought out by contrasting it with sympathy. So sympathy is just, oh, I feel sorry for you, but empathy is actually a deeper understanding of what somebody is experiencing. And it's, I think it's just one step short of experiencing it yourself. And when you have this empathy, it allows you to say, okay, this person is dealing with these issues. The problem of sympathy and the problem of pitying is something that is very, I'm, I'm very passionate about and I often don't speak about it because I feel like it can be taken in the wrong way, but it's crucial. And um, it touches on the industry of charities, it touches on people using poverty as something to gain money. And um, when we see an African child who is starving and needs your money to help, that doesn't create empathy, it creates sympathy, it creates guilt. When you consistently put forward an image of poverty, it creates a problem that people feel is never going to go away, and in the end, it's, it's not going to solve anything. Language and rhetoric are really important, and they actually affect the way that I, the ideas that I have for my project, and it makes me stop short sometimes of even using the term dehumanization, because I feel that that almost fuels the narrative that's been used already. and. Um, which is why distance is a key concept that I like to focus on. And whether it's calling refugees and migrants swarms of people or um, speaking about people as financial statistics, those kind of issues create that distance. And um, I think it's the distance specifically that we want to address. I look to, to other musicians, I look to other artists, people who have been able to create genuine consciousness, gen genuine changes in consciousness. Um, one example is Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly album. It's an album that was very deep, very nuanced, but it was able to create a culture shift where people are aware that these issues are being spoken about. People are aware that things need to change, that things are currently happening that are creating change, and it's allowed a light to be shone on these areas. And so, I think it's about turning my gaze towards what is actually working. Project Five Fist has quite an unorthodox name. Um, it comes from the 1787 United States Constitutional Convention, and that was a meeting where states came together to discuss the, the problem of, um, of slaves and how they could calculate the population numbers of each state so that then they could each be adequately represented in the House of Representatives. And so there was one side which had more slaves and they wanted slaves to be counted because it would give them more representation. And the other states with no slaves didn't want states to be counted because it would give them less representation. So the compromise that they came to have was called the three-fifths compromise, where slaves would count for three-fifths of a person when they were counting state populations. 
And so I've taken that concept and I've said that in the same way that slaves were seen as less than human, today with people who there is distance between them and mainstream society are also seen as less than human in the way that these specific groups are dehumanized in the media. So they are afforded a status lower than most other people. And I feel that that comes because of the distance that the media puts between these groups in mainstream society. And whether that is sociological distance, geographical distance, or economic distance, any kind of distance that is between the mainstream and those people has, has um, in turn made them less than human. The way that this project and this vision actually has legs is through media, is through events. And I've specifically identified these two areas because they provide both a virtual and a physical space in which people can engage with other people. And when you're able to engage with people in these two ways, it helps to close distance because it brings people close. I look at things which are working and I try to adopt those models and those principles and take it forward to create change in the areas I think it needs to be. Thank you.